What is up everyone, I'm Scratch, welcome to the channel, this is another Dragonair Silent Gods video, hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Today I want to spotlight an epic champion that we are able to get for free in Season 2 from the Pillar of Trial. Now you don't have to go and defeat 60 stages on one pillar, uh, for example guys, you need to defeat 60 stages all around from all of the three pillars. So you can do 20, 20, 20, you can do 30, 10 and 20. Uh, it really depends from uh, which one of the elements you have uh, better champions. I know they are pretty challenging, especially the higher you climb on, uh, on these stages. But as long as you manage to defeat 60 stages in total out of the 180, you will be able to get this amazing, amazing epic champion. Now, she is very unique, okay? She will be great uh, against the world bosses, MVP actually, and... The reason why I'm saying she's very unique is because she has a very interesting battle skill. The passive, the hero gains 15% ultimate energy whenever an ally is inflicted with a debuff. This skill only takes effect once every 5 seconds. This can be extremely, extremely efficient for this champion because gaining a lot of ultimate energy will allow her to rotate the ultimate much, much faster. Fairly decent base stats. She's not really the craziest damage dealer or anything like that. Then you have the battle skill, which is the only champion in the game that can do it. This necrotic damage to enemies un uh, around the hero and has sc uh, fully scrolled 100% chance of inflicting a shield prohibition on them for 5 seconds. So basically, they cannot put shield on themselves. Now in Season 2, it's not necessarily as, uh, as important. Yes, you're doing the, the Grave of a Curse. Big deal if he's putting a bit of a shield on it, you know. But you can actually block it. For the uh, ice element, it's pretty hard to make it work. I'm just destroying that, that boss, you know. So early on, yes, it's helpful. But as soon as you get closer to the mid-game, end game, you're going to destroy the domains anyway with whatever champions you have available, you know. So it's not going to be as important. But maybe in a future season, like next season, for example, the world boss might be putting a shield on himself and she will become even more important. What I like the most is the ultimate skill. Strikes the enemy three times, each dealing necrotic damage, 300% attack. So in the to in total is 900 attack. The thing is her base attack is pretty low, you know. With a chance of inflicting recharge speed penalty on them for 10 seconds. Now each hit will have that chance to, to, to proc it. Meanwhile, the third attack has fully scrolled 100% chance of inflicting attack penalty. So you're getting attack penalty, recharge speed penalty, shield prohibition and she can gain uh, ultimate energy from the passive what else you want from a champion plus she looks amazing now there are pros and cons she is a melee hero so my main advice to you guys tank her up tank her up make her your main tank and she will get the job done with no questions asked let me show you for example a run in the grave of curse then we're going to do a world boss how i mentioned if i'm going to the to the frost domain man i'm just destroying the bosses like honestly it is they're not even gonna get a chance to put a shield now the main issue with that is that is on the on the battle skill not on the ultimate skill so that makes quite a bit of a difference now currently i am on the test server guys that's why you might be seeing so much stamina ignore all that my uh elemental affinity is not maxed here either so that makes a bit of a, a bit of a difference but we're going to run a team like this in here so how you may notice she is actually the tank, and this is the build that I have on her. She has the Witch's Remains as well, because she's the perfect candidate to land defense down with the multi-hits from the skill. 100%, no, no questions asked. And I have her on a Moonlight set. Now, because she's not bringing any healing from her own kit, and I, make, I made her a tank, I want her to get at least some healing when she's using the ultimate. That's why I gave her this set, and I'm using her like this on my main account too, for, uh, for the world bosses, and... She's an absolute boss, guys. She's an absolute boss. I have Magan. Let me show you the, the entire team. I have Magan. I have Adolphus. I have Dane. And of course, I have uh, a Rassus to throw in some uh, serious, serious damage. On top of it, uh, I do have a bit of a skill timing in here. She's going to use the ultimate so often that we're actually slowing down the boss so much. The... Boss normally has an 18 second cycle. We're going to get it down to like 22.5 to 23 second cycle. Now, if I'm using a champion like uh, Vinara, for example, 
I'm not knocking down uh, the cycle so much, but with her putting that uh, recharge speed penalty twice on the boss sometimes is just uh, massive. So let's get some more attack in here and uh, get the run up and uh, up and running. I feel like if I would give her damage, she would deal some damage too. But it's much harder, in my opinion, to keep uh, keep her alive. Uh, against waves and stuff like this if you're using her. Now, in this content, it's absolutely fine. I could always use a different tank, like an Isolde, for example, and uh, half her deal damage to next to debuffing. But again, whenever you're trying to make a champion to land the debuffs too, you're losing a lot of damage already. So you're sacrificing that anyway. It's pretty pointless to, to try and uh, squeeze even more, you know, because you're not going to get full full damage knowing that you need to bring accuracy in as well. And the Witch's Remains, you know. If I would give her a different artifact and stuff, then probably she would do damage. But that's not the way I would personally build her, you see. We use the ultimate, we have recharge speed penalty, we have attack down, we have defense down. Right now we have shield prohibition. And once we're going to get to the boss's ultimate again, we should be having uh, her ultimate up and running another time. There we go. We have shield prohibition on, so the boss will deal damage on us right now. And uh, because we have shield prohibition on the boss, the boss is gaining zero shield. Now, anyway, in order for him to gain shield, he needs to damage our team a lot to break our shield that we have. And even like that, he's still not gaining uh, gaining anything. You know, sometimes you see that some champions lose the shield from Adolphus. But look how slow is the boss. Shield prohibition on, he broke the shield on my, uh, on my Dane. And on Arasis, he gained no shield whatsoever. So this can be even more OP in the future, guys. It really depends. It really depends what world boss we're going to have next season. I feel like Karzash is going to be even, uh, even more powerful. Now, in Season 2, because that's when you can actually get a champion, you can use this, uh, this hero against the Necrosis boss, or you can use her against the Fire boss. Now, I chose to use her against the Fire boss personally, because uh, I feel like I'm getting more value out of... Uh, out of her from uh, out of her from there, sorry. And she's just just amazing in there, you know. But look at that. Boss went down. We we kept that boss uh to to run his cycle so freaking slow. Two minutes and eight seconds, yeah, it's not a speed run because you've seen my damage dealer is uh not running with any enablers. I could bring in a better damage dealer and uh, get the job done. But I had a Rassis build, so I said, like, let me use him. Because I do like burn. I do like the, the burn heroes quite a bit, you know. And she doesn't have a damage, uh, a damage build, but she still delivered 12.4%, you know. So it's definitely a fairly, fairly decent amount. Let's actually head over to the world boss and uh, see how we're going to perform in, uh, in there, you know. So I think I said we are attacking the fire boss, yeah. So let's go right here to the... Verzilas, and uh, I think, let me show you my Psychic Core quick. My Psychic Core is uh, not max at the moment, but that's where we are at the moment, you see. So for the fire, in order to kind of like, I actually have the fire almost max. I still need one more in here to get a damage reduction. But on the test server, it's kind of like the old, uh, the old build that I had ages ago, and I'm running, uh, I'm running uh, Torin to, to keep her alive. but. If you have the Psychic Core Max, you have the Alliance uh, alliance bonuses, you don't, you don't need to worry about that, you know. And I don't think I have a bit of a preset, but let me just quickly see what we have in here. You see she has the Witch's Remains, and uh, that, should, uh, that should allow us to, to get uh, the job done. A Moonlight set again, she's built like a tank. I don't think I have a different build on her necessarily. Like she has pretty good, uh, pretty good stats. Uh, almost... Uh, Almost 85k uh, HP, and we have a uh, 3.3k defense, which is definitely pretty solid. That being said, let's see how she's going to perform in here. How I mentioned on my account, I'm using Estelle to heal to heal her, and I survived the entire five minutes. I survived the entire five minutes, but I do have my psychic or maxed the damage reduction too, and I have the alliance uh, alliance bonuses on the test server here. I don't have that, you know. But she's so important, especially against these world bosses. Being able to to keep all the all the debuffs on them is actually massive. 
I don't even have her uh, ultimate timed against this boss, honestly. Uh, they're just going, uh, just going ham. However, they wanna, however they wanna go, basically. I don't think she'll get her ultimate in time uh, before the boss will uh, will hit. But we have that attack down on anyway. There we go. Recharge speed penalty. Defense down. Decrease attack. We have the wild on. 429 from uh, from our uh, Casper in there. She's not built for damage. And in this scenario right here, having her built for damage would be a massive mistake. Like, I would not recommend it to, to waste this champion uh, on a damage build. Maybe next season, I'm going to build her on a serial set. And instead, get, uh, get some... Um, Increase attack on my team whenever we land the debuff. If the set stays the same, you know, I definitely prefer the serial set as it is uh, now compared to what we had in season one. And just like this, she's keeping the the team up and running. Basically, she's keeping the team up uh, up and running for getting the those important debuffs on the on the enemy, and that's what matters the most. Honestly, that's what matters the most. Because we are able to ramp up a lot of damage against this boss, for example. The main thing is decrease attack, recharge speed penalty are the most important debuffs that any character can bring you against the world bosses. And just bosses in general, even in dungeons. But especially against the world bosses. So if I'm thinking about different op options for the Necrosis team, the reason why I'm running her in here is because I can run her as a tank. And against the... Uh, Against the Necrosis, I can just run Adri, you know. Adri, she's great as well. She's a rare champion. She just brings decreased speed penalty, you know. And uh, I feel like in this team, she won't be performing as well as Karza because Karza can tank. Adri cannot, you know. So that's the, that's the big difference in here. I feel like the ultimate best build for Karza is a tank build, you know. Just get her, get her to do the tank. The tank, uh, the tank job, and you don't have to worry about bringing his soul, they bring in front bar, bring in any any other tank, Horus or whatever you guys might uh, might have available. You know, if if you're timing the the decrease attack to have everything uh, everything spot on on the boss, it's gonna be great. Right now, I feel like for whatever reason, they're always using their uh, their skills as soon as the boss is starting a new cycle. I'm not sure if I timed something like that myself. Ah, oh, there we go. So not anymore, not anymore. Not that maybe I timed something myself and I, I forgot about it, but clearly I haven't. So just imagine next season, the boss shielding himself or something. Maybe who knows what bosses they're going to put, you know, and that's when she will be even better than she is right now. When that will, uh, when that will happen, you know. Okay. We're not really getting debuffed by the boss here, so uh, that doesn't uh, activate her uh, her passive. There we go. Get a debuff immunity. We have no decrease attack. We might get hammered. No, we survived. Beautiful. We managed to land it right now. It, it is a bit trickier to to tune the team and time it with uh, with all of the recharge speed penalty on some of these bosses. You know, especially if you have other characters. Uh, dropping ultimate energy like I have uh, uh, Huberg in here. He's a uh, uh, Huberg, sorry. Uh, what's his name? I, I literally forgot his name right now. Uh, the dwarf, you know. Huldork. Huldork is his name, not Huberg. Huldork. When you have Huldork in here dropping ultimate energy uh, and have recharge speed penalty, it's, it's a bit a bit challenging to time the team perfectly, you know. But they are they are putting in serious numbers. Of course, if I'm if I'm taking the tank out of here and I'm bringing in a different tank, this team will not work the same anymore. Because having recharge speed penalty, if you if you if you pay attention to the stack on the boss, he's only at nine stacks. Now recharge speed penalty won't allow him to gain a lot of stacks. That's the trick with recharge speed penalty. That's why it's so important. The boss he won't use the skills as often as he would do without having that on, and because of it. We can survive longer. That's why recharge speed penalty is just such an important, uh, uh, important debuff against these bosses. You know. So here we are. We are coming to to an end, guys. She's still doing the job. Even towards the end, she is not giving up. She's not giving up. 
45 million damage. We're not really going to check necessarily the damage that uh, all the champions dealt because uh, that's not what we are showing today. But you can have a look right here. You can replace these wild heroes with whoever you guys have available. As long as they're wild, you're going to get the party up and running. You can use, uh, you can use the two rare champions that are wild and ranged. They're going to do an amazing, amazing job. Nida and uh, Bronwyn, right? They're both super solid. Uh, so let's let's back out of here and let's quickly check the the build on uh, on the hero in case if you guys want to see the exact total uh, total stats I'm quickly going to to show you that and uh, then we're calling it uh, we're calling it a day right here now in terms of artifacts the crown of the unclean witches remains incense burner are probably the best three artifacts for this champion 84,000 HP 3.3k defense. You see no crit rate, no crit damage, 268 accuracy, 38 skill haste. And we are using the ultimate on an 18.7 seconds uh, cooldown, the battle skill on a 9.4. Uh, that was all for the video, guys. Definitely try and get this champion. It's very easy to reach 60 stages across three different pillars. You need to defeat a couple of bosses on the low stages. Don't try to do it as soon as the pillar opens. Just do, try to do it closer towards the end of the season. If by any chance you're struggling, because by then you're going to max your Psychic Core, you're going to have more characters leveled up at the max level, and that will make it a breeze. That will make it a breeze to farm 20 stages on each one of the pillar. That was all for the video. Much love. Appreciate every single one of you guys watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.